tonight and hold this team to 30 points in the last 22 minutes. What's that say again about just the resiliency that this group has shown? Well, we, we fought through a lot, a lot of things. Uh, not a lot of teams, well, no team's ever done it. And what we all had to go through this year around the world, we had to do it in an NBA season. But we fought and we kept fighting, and that's what we're going to do. I mean, we're not happy with our wins, win total, but we're, 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 we're going to keep competing. I thought we, I thought we, it was a gutty win. It was a lot of, a lot of things uh, were against us. We, we didn't. Uh, have a, a good enough game last night, had a bad start last night, took a lot of energy coming out. We had a chance to cut it to one with three, three and a half minutes to go and did not do that. And we, we didn't, by the time everybody probably got to bed is, I don't know, five o'clock in the morning, we seemed to get to the hotel three, three forty-five, four 3.45, 4 o'clock by the time everybody fell asleep. And, and then you have to do the early morning test at 8.30. Maybe that's the key to success. Sleep is overrated. Just get a couple hours sleep and take a longer nap. But I thought our guys had energy and juice and, we were mixing things up on the defensive end. We're going to have to just continue to do that, you know, until we can figure out how to guard the three-point line, how to guard the one-on-one. And, you know, we threw a lot of zone in there, and I thought it helped. Was that your best defensive effort in the second half that you've seen? Yeah, I mean, we fought. I thought the first half, you know, at the first half, they, they jumped on us in that stretch, but I thought it was an offense. We took probably uh, nine bad shots that led to easy transition in our, in our shooters that, need time and need space. They took a couple of bad looks. And I thought we cleaned that up. We talked about it at halftime. We cleaned it up. We took a good shot, got back in transition. Uh, they didn't have the they didn't have the fast break opportunity. When you make a team score and a half court every time, you give yourself the best chance to get a stock in the lead. Thank you, Scott. Thanks. Matt. Hey Scott. Um, we've asked a lot about Bradley scoring over the years, but you know tonight he past Michael Jordan's previous record of, I think it's 17 straight games of 25 points. Just what makes Brad a, a special scorer? And, uh, you know, he, there's been some prolific scores for this franchise in particular. Just what puts him along that same company? Well, I, I think two, when I think of Brad, two things come to mind, winner and toughness. And, you know, when I first got here, just seeing him, prepare and, and work and, and train and condition and seeing him this past summer doing the same thing, his toughness. He never gets credit for the toughness. A lot of times scorers don't. Um, and, and a lot of times just because a guy has a high scoring average, they don't want to say that he's an all around player and they don't want to say that he, he's tough. And, but he, he's, a, he's a winning basketball player and that we're not winning enough right now, but he's tough. He's tough. He, 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 he plays, man. He plays, and he wants to. Uh, he wants to. I mean, he was fighting me for every minute tonight. Uh, I'm glad that we had the key to the game. I thought was that start of the fourth quarter. We took Brad out. It was a tough decision, but it gave him a chance to, to to get his legs and get some rest. And I thought we did a good job of getting a shot, uh, taking care of the ball, and, and making them take some time off the clock and not getting any easy points in transition against us. And, you know, he's been leading the league in scoring, but he's a few points past uh, the next guy, Kim Durant. Just what does it say about him when not only you're leading the league in scoring, but you're that many points kind of past the next guy? Well, what he's doing offensively, you, you don't see it. You don't see it often. You don't see it. I mean, uh, obviously, James Harden had it uh, the last few years, but. What Brad's doing, he's doing it without having the ball in his hand, you know, throughout the throughout the game. He's coming off. He scores in so many different ways. He scores at the free throw line, which I don't think is enough. Uh, he scores in transition. He scores in pick and roll. He scores in pin downs. The thing that he doesn't that doesn't do if you is that he doesn't that doesn't post up. But I think he's gonna, eventually going to be able to post up. Uh, like he does have a good post up game that we can maybe. Uh, get that going, but he can score in so many different ways. He, that's why it's hard to guard him because he's sprinkling the ball all over the floor. He's on either side. He can go either hand. Uh, he's baseline score, elbow score, top of the key, mid-court score, transition score. He's, he's, he can play pretty good. Want any more, Neil? I know you're nodding your head or you agree with me on all those things. 
Ava? No, keep naming ways in which he can score. Um, right. uh, what did you see in the in the third quarter? It looked like things slowed down a little bit, but you guys held them to 17 points. What did you see that you liked in that stretch? Well, we didn't we didn't turn it over. We didn't take bad shots. That's where we got on them at half half time. We just need to we need to control the game. You know, there's we I knew going into this game that we had to really. Uh, take care of the ball and, and not give a lot of points in transition and not make this attract me. Um, you know, knowing that Russell was not going to play and and, and, the, and the, the hour that we got in and the test early morning testing, uh, thank goodness that we got an eight o'clock start. That, I think that does help. Uh, so kudos to the league on that. Uh, but I thought the third quarter, I thought the second half, we just controlled the tempo and we didn't get we just chipped away at, at the lead and just chipped away, chipped away. But like I said, that, that key to the game was that three or four, four minutes in that fourth quarter when Brad, when Brad beat that out of the game and we were able to you know, manage that, 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 um, that time with the out. And Rui coming off of his um, good offensive game last game had a couple of big contests at the back, but at the bucket late in the fourth. Uh, what'd you see from his defense? Yeah, it's um, better. I thought I thought he was um, he was much more aware. The game, I mean, it's and this is not a knock on Rui and, and, and Danny. There's a lot of things that happen that you need to, you need experience to see it time and time again. And sometimes it takes a few years. I said it yesterday. I think Rui's not even maybe right at like 60 games in his career, and Danny's at you know 12 or whatever he is at 10. So there's a lot of things that the game that they're going to get better game by game, practice by practice, year by year. I wish they were all with 26 and 27 years old and they would be able to handle all the things that are thrown at them. Game is fast, but I thought I thought the, I thought Rui took a little step in the right direction and Denny as well. And I give credit also Alex. I thought Alex. Rolo did his job, and then Alex came in and did his job. Alex played a lot of minutes straight, and that was a tough decision for me to, you know, roll with him and and, and take him out. But I thought I thought he was big at the basket. He made some timely plays and screens and passes. I wish he would have made the game. The game did not reward him in that left corner three. That would have been a nice uh, nice shot for him. Fred. Scott, what did you see from Troy Brown tonight? Um, I thought he played with an urgency. I thought he played with some force. And I like it. I mean, he's going to have to continue to do that. Uh, we need it. We need, we're looking, we've been looking for an extra uh, a player or, or two, and, and everybody's gotten opportunities. And he got an opportunity tonight. Give him credit with our staff. They, they, it's hard. It's hard when, you, when you're out with the, in the safety protocol and and missed a lot of time before that, and and to get your get your mind right is the number one thing. Troy's a great kid that he wants to do well, and I'm glad I'm happy for him because he stayed with it. And a lot of times guys get bitter and they you know they blame everything on everybody else. He's gotten good opportunities, and he's a young player. He's going to get more opportunities. This is a good start. Hopefully, we can add to this. And sometimes you don't have to don't have to worry about getting minutes. You just have to worry about Playing your minutes well, and I thought he played them well tonight. He had a couple of moments that we all wish he could have taken back, but I thought he was solid throughout the game. He made some big, timely shots and big time rebounds. I thought his defense, um, he, he stayed into the ball and fought over screens. Uh, he's gonna have to continue to do, do that, Neil. Scott, if I remember correctly, we've asked you this before about not fouling up three, but given that Miami, you know, has a couple of lethal shooters from that, what's the decision here specifically to not foul before Hero even gets the ball? Yeah, well, the decision was to foul, so we just didn't execute it. Uh, we finally got something to go our way. We wanted to foul. We wanted two opportunities. And this is, this is the unfortunate thing with no shoot around and no practice time, and not a lot. And then you got to put your priorities in, in place and sometimes late game situations. Um, but yeah, we were, our plan was that they were gonna force them to catch the ball, go back to the basket and on the first dribble uh, foul. 
I thought Rui had a chance to foul him uh, about one or maybe even two dribbles that he should have fouled. And but once once you don't initially, these players are so good at, at seeing your hands reach into the cookie jar and they just go up and the referees are put in the tough position. So at that point, when we did not have the foul after that exchange, he made the right decision by not fouling him and just let him take a tough shot over. But initially we wanted a foul, we didn't execute it. And, but it's on me, I mean, we don't, we, those are things that we have to practice and you have to work on. Yaron. Um, coach, uh, can you talk about the zone defense? Uh, maybe I missed that uh, in the first part. Yeah. And then also about uh, that dunk by, by Denny and the missed dunk. Did you, is, is there, did you like that extra aggressiveness? The, the missed dunk or the dunk? Which one? <laughs> On both. Uh, I, I liked that. I thought Denny played a solid game tonight. Uh, you know, what we're trying to do is we're trying to teach him how to be a pro. And I think he's done a pretty good job of the professionalism he brings, the work ethic that he brings, but experience that he needs is going to take time. And I know we, we want him to, to, to play well and play uh, every night, but I thought tonight was another step in the right direction. It's a hard league. It's a hard league to play. It's a hard league to start, uh, especially a 19 year old to come in or um, and start. He's playing against first line players. A lot of times the younger players, get to come off the bench and they play against second line players. And, and he has to guard the good players. And we all know how many dynamic players there are on the wings. And he's done a pretty good job, not a great job, but a pretty good job that he's going to keep getting better because he cares. His, his give a crap level is high and his willing to work is high. And his uh, ability to absorb and smart, he's a smart kid that he's going to pick things up. But I like his aggressiveness. I like the fact that Brad found him a bunch of times and that's, that says a lot about him. You're one of your best players is, is trusting you to make shots. And that zone defense? Oh, the zone defense? I thought it was thought it was good. We put it in a while back, our full court press and, and through um, getting back. I think we put it against um, Phoenix. And then we had some success. Uh, we haven't been to it as much, but we need to keep doing it until we figure out how to how to get some consistent stops on the defensive end. Uh, last night it was hard to do it because they made so many nine threes in the first half and kind of get a little worried. But I thought that controlled the tempo and it made us, it put us in a, in a good spot. Um, but I thought the offense, our offensive execution, our good shots allowed us to get back in defense because we were, we had time to get back into our, 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 own, our zone. Uh, Ferdinand. Hello, coach from Puerto Rico. The team has looked better these last few games. Um, what has been your message to the players this week? Um, staying, staying together is always important. And it's, uh, it's just a, it's a different times right now. Uh, but the, the most important thing is that we, we help each other. Uh, when, when, you, when you're struggling, you need to help each other. You need to help each other score. You need to help each other get a stop. And we all we all understand that if we we're not we're not happy where we are. But uh, I'm pretty proud of the guys' ability to stick together because a, a lot of times when things don't go well, you got a, a lot of distractions that want to separate you. But that's just that's just you just gotta that's that's been around forever and that's not going anywhere. But but once once you get separated, it's hard to bring it back. But, our guys are pretty close, and, and we just got to keep keep building off of um, playing good basketball. We know we, we have a lot of games this month, and I keep saying it, we need games. Unfortunately, we, we um, tripped one uh, last night. If we would have had a better start, maybe it would have been a different outcome. But came back tonight. We can't worry about yesterday. You got to look forward and play forward, and that's what we're doing. Matt. Here. Coach, apologies if you addressed this already, but – was the Mo a rest thing tonight or a matchup kind of situation? No, it was a matchup. Um, we got, like I've, I've said, we got, we got, we have three, three solid uh, centers: Rolo, Alex, and Mo. 
And it's hard to play all three. We try to a few games, but it's hard. You got to pick. Tomorrow night might be, or the next night might be a little more mode. But they're all team guys. They all cheer for one another, and that's how. That's when you have a. Uh, we have a good. That that position is going to be by committing it, and it's solid. Everybody seems to uh, want each other to do well. Even the, even our point guards. I mean, uh, Cash is you know not in the mix now, but you know Hau and Ish. And and Russell, that's we got three solid ones there, and Raul is a good shooter, so he can play a little bit of the, the small guard lineup. But yeah, Mo is just uh, just that's the way his turn. He's fine. Last question for Zach. So this is your first uh, road to in you know whatever city. What are your feelings after the first game and going to the second game, playing the same team on the road? I mean, you're in Miami; could be worse, but. Um, just kind of the, this is a new thing for you yeah i mean we could be anywhere right now we have to, we're pretty much stuck in our hotel room and, and we get a, we get to walk outside for an hour to get exercise so i have i've only used 53 minutes of mine today so i have hopefully you guys can let me off of this so i can go run for seven minutes to south beach and back um yeah i mean it's we got to have a, a, an optional an optional day tomorrow, and and I hope everybody um, comes and it, you know, just to get out of the hotel. It's it's good to get some vitamin D and get into the gym. But normally when we do have optional days, we have just about every player. I'm sure Brad's going to need some rest uh, the way he's been you know, playing and, and carrying us and back to backs and getting up early and testing and this and that. But I have a great view of my hotel. Uh, I'll enjoy that. DB, how'd you feel uh, going on this back to back? Your first since you know returning from the protocols and everything, and you know getting your legs under you. Well, all I focused on was uh, getting as much sleep as possible. You know, in the morning I had to wake up with testing, then went back to sleep because you know I've got like about four hours, four and a half hours of sleep at night, and nap time, lunch. And basically, that was it. That was it. That was the key. Get some treatments, get some sleep, and uh, and get ready. You've been on this team now, your second season. I know a lot of the games like this tonight haven't gone your way over the past years. How did it feel for you know to get those stops and uh, make the free throws and, and have it go your way? Uh, definitely felt great. It's uh, it's encouraging to win the game uh, with defense, with defensive stops. You know, you, you know, on offense, if you make shots, then uh, that's in NBA, in the whole world, the, the percentages of making those game-winning shots, uh, last-second shots, is, is, is small. So, you know, if you get stops on defense uh, and win the game that way, uh, it gives you a better chance uh, also going forward. Fred? Hey, Davis. Um, just, just more generally, I, I know you were kind of all the way back at one point, but now after you were out the the couple of weeks, where where is where would you say your conditioning is at after missing that time? Uh, you know, somehow physically conditioning feels feels good. You know, those four days that I had before the first game uh, coming back uh, got a lot of work in, and that way I feel I can run a lot. You know, coming on back to back games, uh, I didn't really feel tired on the court. And uh, in that sense, everything's good. But, you know, the, the, just the rhythm of the game. It, those two weeks sitting in hotel room doing absolutely nothing is, uh, is brutal. So it's just, just getting the feel for the game back and, uh, and more like that. And, and you know, I got I to be patient. You know, sometimes, I, like, in my mind, I'm still in, you know, previous season, the middle of the season when I was in, in great rhythm and, uh, and everything's falling. So I got to be patient. I got to put... I definitely got to put the team first and, uh, you know, wait for the good looks. And and correct me if, if you think that I'm wrong on this, uh, but it, it seems to me at least that most of your misses seem to be missing short and you're not really missing long as much. If if the conditioning is there, why why do you think that is? Uh, that's a good question because uh, if I could answer you, I would, I would be really happy. And, and I think uh, two, in two days, I come in here and make every shot. But uh, overall, I think it's just uh, just just the feel, also the touch, everything. Uh, you know, it's like because when I let it go, most of those shots felt good. So that that that's the problem that they feel good. You know, if I miss and they feel bad, then I know what's the problem. 
So, you know, I think it's going to just take some patience, get the rhythm, get the good looks first. And then that's slowly going to get me back in that, in that, in that shooting shape. Neil. Hey, Davis, to follow up on that a little bit, just how would you compare and contrast when you were coming back after, you know, not really having a training camp to coming back now after the protocol? Uh, the difference is then uh, when I was, when I started with the team, I felt like I was in uh, conditioning wise, I wasn't in good shape. Uh, this time it just feels it more kind of disrupted the rhythm, especially, you know, the last game before, uh, before that break was, I had a good shooting game and, uh, and kind of had a feeling that it's, it's slowly coming back and, uh, and, and the confidence going up and having that break, uh, that kind of disrupted that a little bit. Ferdinand. Ferdinand, you might be on mute if you're talking. All right, we'll go to Christos. Hello, Davis. Congratulations on the win. What it means the way that you won tonight? How big boost you get about uh, the way that you won? And also, how enjoyable for you is to share the court with uh, Bradley Bill? Uh, you know, as uh, as a win, it's, it's important to win to get some wins to get the confidence. Uh, especially that we didn't let them score that many points this game uh, and having to win that way. Because uh, offensively, we still have a lot of room uh, to improve, you know, because uh, shots are still not falling and, and winning a game that way is, is encouraging. Because, you know, last year, also this year, many games we were a team that's scoring 120 points easy, sometimes even more. Uh, so, you know, defense is a key that way. And sharing the court with Bradley Beal, that's honestly on – on offense is easy. It's very easy because uh, they have to put two defenders on him to even slow him down a little bit. They sometimes don't even stop him that way. And that just opens up for everybody else. You know, we, we get good open looks. Uh, I think once once we start hitting those, uh, we're going to be a much more dangerous team. And uh, you believe uh, he deserves to be the starting, uh, starting guard in all-star game? So I think there's no question about it. Like, his game for uh, speak for itself. So. So I don't think that we need to advertise that he's an all-star. He was supposed to be last year, and uh, this year there's no question about it. Thank you. And try Ferdinand one more time. Hello, Davis from Puerto Rico. What this victory means for the team and how this one helps the team? Uh, you know, it gives us one more win in the win column. Uh, gives us confidence a little bit more. Gives us that boost that we need, you know, especially again that we're fighting till the end uh, to get the win at the end, uh, you know, that's that's important. It's very important. And, uh, you know, because that could be, that that's a morale booster. You know, if you if you lose a game like that when you fight till the end, that that just makes it a lot tougher. Like sometimes those losses are tougher than the ones that you lose by 20 or 30. Hello, Rui. Congratulations on the win. How big boost you get from uh, the way that you won tonight? And do you believe it was kind of a statement about your potential as a team? Yeah, you know, we've been actually, we, we've been playing good. We started playing good, you know, we started playing together uh, as offense and defense. And then now um, we had a great game against the Nats, Brooklyn. And then last night we, we actually had it against the Brazers. But um, today, tonight, uh, we had a, we had a, we played very good de defense and we had a win. Ava? Rui, can you kind of take us through um, your last big contest of the bucket there when you're up in Jimmy's space and, and you're fighting for that rebound and kind of giving him elbows and everything? You know, he's a he's one of those guys, you know, uh, he's trying to get far, he's trying to get into uh, your body and stuff. So I had to I had to be strong and, uh, you know, I knew he got like a, I think, five, six offense rebound. So if the Balls go up, um, off. I, I, I knew, you know, he was gonna jump, so I just got a rebound, and uh, yeah, I think uh, that was a big play. And Scott said he felt like you took a step in the right direction tonight. Did you feel like you're putting something together, or you're, maybe you're getting your legs back after the rest? How did you feel? Yeah, I mean, I mean, um, tonight I, sh I I missed a lot of shots, but you know, uh, defensively um, and then rebound. Um, 
passing, I think it was good, you know. Um, play for a team. I always play for a team to win. And then tonight we had a very great team win. Fred? Hey, Rui. Um, where, how, how do you uh, view the game defensively differently now than you did when you first came into the league? What parts of defense are, are easier for you to read? Uh, I think uh, just the personnel, you know, um, there's a lot of players and then they like, you know, um, the guy who can shoot well, who can like drive, you know, like get into the body and like tonight, Jimmy Butler, you know, he's really good at finishing around the rim. Uh, we run the, a lot of guys, you know, we, you just need like, you know, to know the personnel and then, uh, yeah, that's, that's how you got to play. And then my first year, I almost had no idea like who's the, which one, which one. And now I kind of got used to it and I start getting to know it and watch a lot of film with the coaches. And then, yeah, I think that's helping them. Hey, Rui. Uh, Scott was telling us that the play design at the end was to foul Miami when they were up three. Is yeah. that something that was clear to you and then you just couldn't react in time before, you know, potentially risking fouling the shooter? Yeah, I, I, yeah, I was going to foul, but it was kind of late. Yeah, he, they, he already passed to the, uh, what's his name, the Tyler Hill. So I was like, okay, I'm just going to learn. Um, but yeah, that was the play that I, I was supposed to foul, but yeah, I didn't do it. Was there an option to foul Bam as soon as he caught it? Yes, yes, yes. But I, I was I was too late, so yeah, I just put, you know, maybe he can just put the shoes and like give us free throw, free throw and stuff. So I just I just stayed. It. Ferdinand. Hey, Rui from Puerto Rico. What do you think of this beginning of the season that you have had so far? What is what you expected or you think you can do it better? Um, you know, as a team right now, I think our offense is pretty good, you know. I think we like a second in the league. Our our defense is very, you know, um low. So, you know, I think we just gotta improve more defense. And tonight we shot it, you know, the defense was pretty good. You know, we even set up uh Tom. And then that worked, and, and then we, I think we're just getting better as a team, you know, the defense free, and then our offense always good. So I think defense is key to win all those games. Thank you. And Ava? Um, Rui, you've talked to us so much about how weird your first couple of years have been and how disjointed with all the breaks and the COVID and everything like that. What has the coaching staff message to you been in particular this month? as you're trying to work your way back? Oh, um, they just told me to be aggressive, you know. Um, like, both ends, you know, defense free and the offense free. Uh, communicate, um, just be aggressive. I think those are things that they've been telling me, you know. And you broke Michael Jordan's record. Uh, what What is that like for you to be able to hear that you broke a Michael Jordan record? Uh, first praise my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Um, It's pretty cool, you know. It's a remarkable achievement. Um, you know, it's not something you always shoot for, but it's amazing to hear all the stats and um, that we come up with in our game. And uh, you know, it's just to pass him is, you know, it's always a great feeling. You know, it's always something you always kind of you know put in your accolades. But you know, at the same time, it felt even better getting it in a win. You know, so uh, you know, it was a milestone in a lot of fashions tonight, and so I was happy. Except we got the dub overall, but you know, the past Mike, like you said, for it was uh men's a lot. Neil. Hey Brad, after you know a somewhat disappointing loss last night, what was the message and uh tone of the team that you wanted to share with them to say, okay, let's put that behind us and you know, we have another opportunity here? Well, I mean, coach kind of lit us up, lit a fire up under us. Um last game and then coming into this game. Uh, you know, it was just it was just a matter of us. We kind of showed our hand tonight, but we showed it, you know, in Brooklyn too. It's like we we're showing we can we can win games. We're showing we can defend. We're showing we can move the ball on offense. You know, it's and it's just consistency. I think I said that last game, you know, it's just being more consistent, uh, being confident in everything that we do out there on the floor. 
and uh, and bring it every night, you know, because it's, it's the NBA, it's the highest level of basketball, and uh, teams aren't going to feel sorry for us, and teams aren't going to stop, you know, games aren't going to stop either, so so just going to continue to come, come, and come, and we just got to be ready to go, and uh, no matter who it's against. Ava? Uh, Brad Scott called this game a step forward for both Rui and Denny. What did you see from them, maybe particularly on the defensive end from Rui? Um, did you, I guess, do you agree with that assessment? Oh, yeah. I mean, they both, they're both just coming into their own. Uh, I always say I don't, I don't put my expectation bar super high for them because there's like, they're supposed to just learn, you know, Denny's whole rookie year should be about learning, you know. Granted, we're throwing you into the fire. We want you to make an impact, but you know he's going to make mistakes. You know Rui's going to make mistakes, um, and you know they're they're just coming into their own. It's good to be able to have them back both healthy for one, um, and two. They're they're finally getting their legs up under them. So uh, we're we're just putting them in positions to succeed on uh, on both ends of the floor. You know, and they 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 began to accept that challenge on the defensive end because they know teams are going to attack them. You know, teams are going to respect their, you know, their defensive ability, so they say. So tonight they did a good job of accepting those challenges and guarding one-on-one. -on -one. And Scott also shared with us, I don't know if we kind of realize when you guys get in on the road like this and you're not getting to bed until four and you've got to get up for the test at 8.30, just how much harder is it this season, literally because you have less sleep that also mentioned you guys obviously aren't practicing shooting around as less, so the communication is harder. Can you speak just a little bit to that extra challenge? Yeah, it's tough. Because uh, I don't know I didn't go to sleep till about five thirty last night, and you gotta wake up at eight and take a test. So it's like I said, the last game too. It's like this isn't normal. This whole year isn't normal. The season isn't normal. Uh, everything is different. The testing is different. So. You know, it's just what we got to do in order to be out here on the floor. You know, it's it's not fair, but you know, we're not the only team that goes through it, so it's not like a "woe is me" or "pity on us" type type moments we're feeling. So, you know, we just got to do what we got to do, and uh, you know, thankfully we found some rest and energy somewhere and came out to do it. Matt, hey Brad, uh, going back to Michael's thing real quick about. The all-time record holder for that streak is Wilt Chamberlain, and he did it throughout an entire season, I guess. One, do you, do you think it's possible for this to keep going? I know you're not maybe concerned about it, but – and then just when you hear that Wilt Chamberlain did it over the course of an entire season, what what's kind of your reaction? Well, if one man did it, it's definitely possible, so there's your answer to that. And then, two, I'm not worried about it, so you answered that one for me, too. So there you go. All right, thanks, Brad. Yeah. You're on. Um, Brad, uh, uh, you talked about the defense being better today. Is that something you can uh, replicate? Maybe that zone defense that that we saw in the second half. Uh, we got to be more consistent. You know, it's you know whether no matter what defense we're playing, you know we got to be we got to be more consistent with with our effort, our communication, rebounding, and uh, and everything that goes into it. You know, we, the zone affected them a lot tonight. We we kind of mixed it in, and you know they. Didn't really know how to how to really beat it until they ran one play specifically, and I think they scored with a Jimmy Butler lob or whatever it was. That was their counter. Uh, but we did a good job of just matching up, being physical, you know, making them take take and make tough shots if they if that was the case. Um, you know, so like I said before, we showed our hand, man. We just gotta we gotta be better on defense, accept those challenges on a nightly basis. You know, Miami's a good team. You know, um, so we got them again on Friday, and it's just gonna continue to continue to get. More Hello, Brad. Congratulations on the win. What it means this win with the way that you won tonight, and uh, it was a kind of a statement about your potential as a team. Uh, I mean, we still got a long way to go. You know, we we're not in a position to be making statements right now. Uh, you know, we. We, we got a lot of groundwork to make up and we got to prove that we're a winning team, you know? So it's not like we're, we're sending messages or anything like that. Like granted, yeah, we are every time we step onto the floor, but our objective is to win. Our objective is to not be five and what 13, whatever the record is, you know? So we got to be better. Uh, you know, there's not like a big celebratory thing in the locker room. Yeah, we're happy, we're, you know, we're, you know, enlightened, but at the same time, you know, we're hungry for more. We're hungry to be better. So. 
that's a positive and that's a great feeling to have. You know, we, we, we definitely take wins how they come. It was a grinded out tough win tonight. Um, and that's that's something that we need. You know, I think that's a stepping stone for us, hopefully projecting us forward. Make a hero. Oh, sorry. I, 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 I have no, no question. Sorry. Uh, Quentin. What's up, B? Uh, how long does it typically take you to figure out what a defense is is doing to you? I know early they were doubling you a lot on dribble handoffs, forcing the ball out of your hands, and then fast forward to the fourth quarter, you had the corner where you, you know, snatched, throw it over, and then went body to body with Jimmy. How long does it typically take you to diagnose a defense, and uh, or is that just a constant thing throughout the entire game? Uh, it doesn't take long. Usually, I know how how they're going to play out the gate. Um, depending on what bigs they have, like big mobile guys like Bam. Bam from guard one through five, so he was switching. Um, you know, I knew Kelly Olenek and, you know, the rest of their team was either going to show or switch. And those are the matchups that I wanted. Grant and I had Bam a lot of times. Um, but I was trying to take advantage of those, those guys who I felt like couldn't guard. So um, our, our guys did a good job of just setting those screens. And throughout the course of the game, they they, they kept two on the ball. They didn't, they didn't leave. Um, until I picked the ball up or got rid of the ball. Um, so my biggest thing was just making sure, try to keep Bam out of as many pick and rolls as possible and, uh, you know, force a lot of the other guys to, you know, come out and guard. Um, and then the one play you were saying specifically, the whole game I was trying to beat guys around the screen and they, and they wouldn't, they wouldn't, they, I mean, they, they defended it well. You know, it was me versus the sideline essentially. And they were taking away my splits too, so. They did, a, they did a hell of a job of defending, you know, everything that I wanted to do. Uh, but to answer your question, I usually know what's going on pretty early. Uh, but my, it's funny, the biggest adjustment was at the end of the game with the split in the corner. Appreciate it, B. Yeah. Ferdinand. Hello, Brad from Puerto Rico. How does it feel to compete against Jimmy Butler and get this win for the Washington fans? Uh, it's always great. Jimmy's a... Jimmy's an unbelievable player. Uh, he's a star in our league, a uh, true leader. And, uh, you know, it's always competitive when we play. Uh, you know, he always just wants to win, whatever it looks like. Um, he always takes the hardest, you know, toughest defensive challenge. And uh, it's, it's always competitive. You know, I have nothing but respect for Jimmy. Uh, and it's, it's, it feels good to be able to come out with a win. We didn't just beat him, we beat the Miami Heat. Um, so. It definitely feels good to be in the win column, but we still got a lot of work to do. What has been your message to the team in these difficult times? Uh, stay together, stay consistent. You know, that's it. Um, teams aren't going to feel sorry for us. Fans, media, nobody's going to feel sorry for us. Um, nobody's going to dig, dig us out of this hole but ourselves. And the only way to do that is collectively together. Um, and then, you know, when we have games like this, games like Brooklyn games, you know, which we win, Minnesota game, uh, you know, it's just consistency, you know, playing that same way, playing with that same energy, playing with that same fire, same focus uh, for 40 years. Thank you. Yeah. And last question for Zach. Brad, uh, you've been here for Troy's journey for him to step up so and get that chance uh, to to him before, during the game. We like uh, Washington. Mute, mute my man. What'd you say, Zach? Uh, just about Troy tonight. You know, what have your conversations been like with him? I know he was in the protocols, and for him to step up, you know, on both ends. It was. It was I'm proud of him because he didn't get a lot of burn last game, uh, coming off protocol, and uh, and he was ready to go tonight. You know, we threw him and threw him in the fire with the point guard position, and uh, he handled it well. And, uh, you know, that's that's a sign of a true pro being ready when your name is called. Uh, so I was definitely happy for him. He made some big shots, big plays, was guarding well. Uh, Troy has great size, you know, so we need him. You know, we need him every single game, you know. So it was great to be able to see Coach trusting him, and he got some burn tonight.